In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, one God, Amen. Today's passage is such a beautiful passage. We are in the fifth Sunday of Lent, and this is the Sunday of the paralytic, Had al-Mukhalla, who was paralytic for 38 years. We have to know something that um, the Gospels, the, the Apostles, when they wrote the Gospels, they wrote them for our edification. So, Christ did not heal one paralytic. Christ did not heal one blind man or one uh, person who is mute. Christ healed many. But, and even in the Gospel of John, which we read from today, at the end of the Gospel, at the, at the very end, he says that if everything that Christ did was written, he perceives that the books of this world will not be enough. Which tells us that we have to understand when the, when the apostles picked those accounts to document and to, uh, to convey, it is because they know that they reveal the divinity of Christ. So it is not only that the, he had healed, he, they did not mention all the miracles that he did, but they mentioned the miracles that they want the people to uh, understand and to know that he is God. And this is why at the end of this passage, it is clear that the Pharisees persecuted Jesus because he said he and the Father are one, making him equal with God. Many things we can learn from today's passage. The first thing is simply this man, his interaction with Christ, Christ told him three things. First of all, do you want to be made well? Second, rise up and walk. Third, sin no more. One thing to note about the first statement that Christ said, he said, do you want to be made well? If we look at the original text, which is Greek, the word want here was a bit more like intend. Do you will? Do you intend to be made well? Do you? So it is want, but it's more like, do you have the intention to be made well? Even in the, the, the literal, uh, in one of the commentaries by St. John Chrysostom, he quotes the verse, the verse, do you will to be made well? Do you intend to be made well? One thing to, to note about the paralytic man himself, it is quite frustrating after 38 years being a paralytic for someone to ask you, do you want to be made well? And he's sitting in front of the, 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 the porch and the, the, the water waiting for the angel to come down. It is quite obvious that he, anyone in his position would want to be made well. That's quite obvious. But what Christ, when he asked him, do you will to, me, to be made well? The person responded very simply in the affirmative. As in, he said, yes, in a way, because he said, I just need someone to put me in the water. I intend to be made well. After 38 years, this shows the person had hope. The, poor, the person was not in despair. He was there 38 years, but he did not despair. And when someone who he didn't know who this person is, this is a re, like to, to the paralytic, Jesus is just another person standing and asking him, do you, will, do you want to be made well? So he probably was, was telling him, I just need someone to put me in the water, thinking that hopefully Christ would say, okay, I'll put you in the water, right? I'll help you get into the water, right? But he had the hope that someone will, right? And by this hope, Christ told him, get up and walk. We have to understand that also when we, when we meet this passage or and we, when we encounter this passage of the paralytic, the paralysis in terms of the physical illness is one thing, but we also have many spiritual illnesses. 
And it could be the same with us, but from a spiritual manner. It could be that it's something that is a habit that I can't get over. And it's been a habit for me for years, for many years. And it's very hard for me to overcome. It's very hard. So when someone asks me, do you want to be made well? Do you intend to be made well? Yes, I, I do intend to be. I just need help. That's, that's what the paralytic was saying. And this is what applies to every single one of us. So the first thing is, is the will to be made well. The will to be made well. That's, that's the first important thing. The fathers sometimes liken this passage to baptism. Because in baptism, St. John the Baptist, when he came to prepare the way for God, he prepared the way of repentance. He said, come, be baptized, and repent, for the kingdom of God is at hand. Right? So he prepared the way of repentance, so that Christ comes and what? And baptizes us by water and spirit, not just by water. So many of the fathers liken this to this aspect of our life, which is baptism and our entering into the kingdom, where first there has to be the will to change. Even when we read in the history of, of the church, in the history of baptism, the, the church would make sure the person is serious about the change. Because baptism is not just a membership. Baptism is change. Christ gives us the authority, but we are the ones who decide to change or not. That's why many people are baptized, but not all of them walk in repentance. For the will to change is important. Next is him who gives the change, who is Jesus Christ, our Lord, through the Holy Spirit and through the, His work in our life, He is the one that tells us, this is what you need to do. Take up your bed and walk. When He says, take up your bed and walk, He says, get up and start walking in the path I show you. Start walking in the path I tell you. Take up your bed, hold your bed and go to go and walk, go to your home. So, if the first thing is our will to change, the second thing is our obedience to Him who can change us. If the first thing is our will to change, the second step is obe obeying the one who can change us. And when He took up His bed and walked, we understand that he had some conversation with the Pharisees and they told him it's not lawful for you to carry your bed on the Sabbath. And he told them, him who healed me said to me, it doesn't matter what you say because he is the one that ha can make the change. And if he said I need to take up my bed and walk, then I'll take my bed and walk. It truly shows that this person truly wanted to change. Maybe someone else, someone else who, who Christ would ask him, do you want to be changed? Do you want to be made well? And then Christ would tell him, again, they, he didn't know whom, who this man is. Someone would tell him, take up your bed and walk. He would tell him, no, no, this is the Sabbath. I cannot take up my bed and walk. I just want you to put me in the water. But this paralytic man understood, right? that he needs help. So he's not the one who decides what to do. Again, the paralytic understood that he is the one that needs help. So he did not put in his mind his own wisdom and his own understanding. He needs help, so he listened to help that was given to him. And this is one of the things we have to do. If we will to change, we truly have to obey, understanding that we do need help. 
It is not by my own wisdom that I can fight my desires. It is not by my own strength that I can fight the flesh. I can tell to myself fasting is, is, uh, is a great thing and I heard a lot about it, but it's not for me. I can say prayers are a great thing, but it doesn't work for me. I pray differently. I can say confession is something that is probably useful, but it doesn't work for me. So the question is, do you want to be made well? Lastly, after he had met Christ whom he didn't know, Christ told him, sin no more. And when he said, lest a worse thing come upon you, we might perceive that God allowed this illness because of a sin. But not necessarily, because that's not exactly what he's saying. He's saying there might be worse if you sin. And truly, physical illness is nothing compared to separation from the source of life. And this is the last step that he's speaking to him, is that you will to change is the first thing, you obey is the second thing, and you resist temptation is the third thing. So the, the message today is truly about change and us willing to do what it takes to change. Most importantly is the first step, is for us to recognize that we do need help and we should not lose hope. No matter how many years, no matter what age am I, what circumstance, it is possible. But if I submit to the person who can make the change and once I submit to the person who makes the change I then can resist my own temptations my, my desires and, and the sins in my life and that becomes my life of change and repentance so I will summarize quickly as well in Arabic in Harda fil Ingil bitha al المسيح قال للمخلع ثلاث حاجات وتعلمنا كثير عن التوبة أول حاجة قال له هل تريد أن تبرؤ وكنا بنقول إن في ال في اليوناني ال ال النص اليوناني بتاع الإنجيل تريد هنا بمعنى أنت ناوي ولا لا ناوي تبرؤ ولا لا فطبعا لما المسيح بيسأل حاجة كده بعد حد عنده مرض بقاله 38 سنة بيبقى صعب الواحد يقول يعني ما, رب ما, أو ما يعرفش ان هو ربنا طبعا فبيقول له ما انت يعني ممكن يقول له ما انت عارف يعني ما انت شايف يعني وما انا قاعد هنا ليه يعني فلكن لكن هو الرجل رد بطريقة مختلفة اه انا عايز انا بس محتاج حد يساعدني ليه لأن دي الحاجة الوحيدة اللي هو كان يعرفها ساعد يعني دي الحاجة الوحيدة اللي كان يعرفها إن هو لازم حد يدخله في الماية فلما المسيح قال له خد سريرك قوم احمل سريرك وامشي ودي تاني حاجة قالها له الرجل بدل ما يقول النهاردة السبت وأنا ما ما يحلش لي إن أنا أحمل سريري وكذا وبتاع هو محتاج هو عارف إن هو محتاج مساعدة فمش حينا مش حيناقش المسيح او مش حيناقش الراجل اللي جاي يساعده يعمل حاجة ولا لا فخدش سريره ومشي ولما ربنا شفاه والفرسين جم قالوا له انت ليه حمل سريرك ده السبت قال لهم هو اللي شفاني قال لي كده طالما هو قادر يشفيني يبقى هو اللي بيقوله لازم امشي عليه فدي مهمة جدا ان الواحد ما يبقاش داخل حياة التوبة بتفكيره هو لانه كان ممكن جدا الرجل ده يقول له لا انت بتسألني سؤال يعني يعني مش منطقي او يقول له لا ما ينفعش احمل سريري انا لازم انزل المية فانت لازم تنزلني 
فلما الواحد يمشي في حياه التوبه لازم ما يمشيش بعقله هو يعرف ان هو المسيح هو اللي عنده الشفاء فانا لازم اجيله واسمع كلامه اخر حاجه الهالو المسيح لا تخطئ ايضا لا تخطئ ايضا لان الاشر من انه مجرد يبقى مرض جسدي انه يبقى مرض روحي بمعنى ان انا ابقى بعيد عن مصدر الحياه اللي هو المسيح فدي ثالث خطوه في التوبه اول خطوه ان انا ابقى فعلا عارف او فعلا عايز وناوي ان انا اتغير تاني خطوة ان انا اعرف ان التغيير ده ما ينفعش يبقى انا محتاج مساعدة واتغير بدماغي انا كمان لان انا نفسي محتاج مساعدة فلازم اسمع للمسيح وتالت حاجة انه احارب الخطية اللي في حياتي واطلعها من حياتي Last thing I will say is that during the period of the fast we might with good intentions be fasting But we make fasting our goal. We make fasting our goal. As in, this is a 55-day challenge that I will potentially post on social media or something that I, I you know, accomplished the, the, the fast rules for 55 days. But the church has never understood it this way. The church knows that fasting is done to get rid of something else. For me to have self-control and to repent from my sins. So if I choose to myself, I will abstain from this and that and this for the 55 days. But I do not choose at least one sin in my life. By the end of the 55 days, I get rid of it. Then what is good? What good is my fast? What good is my fast? That's why Christ said, this kind cannot come out but by fasting and prayer. Has a الينس لا يخرج الا بالصوم والصلاه right so he christ knows that fasting is needed but i should not distract myself from the goal and focus on the rule of the fasting i follow the rule of the fasting to have self control so i can get rid of sin which is the last message that christ said to us today may god give us this strength to always have faith in him and to obey him Glory be to God forever. Amen.